what's going on YouTube fam? This is your boy Jay Money here and I'm bringing you guys a rather polarizing topic that hasn't been talked about I don't think at all. Um, now it's been just mentioned here and there in small increments and um, it's something that uh, me and my friends have actually been back and forth about for months now. And the topic is just should you allow your opponent to play the game? I'm only talking about competitive play here. I'm talking about, you know, modern Yu-Gi-Oh! right here. Um, basically, I think this has been a thing ever since Master Wolf 4. And I'm about to go brush up on that. But, friends of mine uh, don't like the decks I play. As a lot of people uh, in the Yu-Gi-Oh! community really don't like those kind of decks. Because they... Um, or, yeah, they don't allow your opponent to play the game, obviously. You know, any of you watch my channel for any length of time know that I make, you know, nice, spicy, juicy boards, you know, with rogue decks, with um, sleeper decks, all that stuff. So, um, so if I take it to locals, I will get, you know, complaints here and there about, oh, your opponent doesn't get play, but, you know, should your opponent be allowed to play? Now, that seems like a no-brainer because this is Yu-Gi-Oh! It is a two-player card game that is you and there's an opponent across the table from you and all that. And I understand that much, but um, I think what isn't being talked about is the underlying consequences that happens when your opponent is playing the game. When your opponent is allowed to play the game in modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Essentially ever since uh, Master Wolf Force started. And this is where I inherited that that little quote that I uh, that uh, that came from yours truly. If your opponent is playing, you are losing. If your opponent is playing the game, you are probably going to lose the game. And <sighs> why is that? Why? And I said this, um, you know, in arguments with me and my friends. You can't afford to let your opponent play, especially in modern Yu-Gi-Oh. Why is that? Well, for one, cards now versus back then gain so much more mileage and can do so much more and have so much more synergy than back then. You know, what did one tour guide back then do? Well, it gave you a Dante with a graph under it and graph something to burning abyss. However, the rest of your setup depended on other cards in your hand. So, yeah, that card gave you a couple bodies on board, pretty notable, but the rest of your hand determines how good um, that one card may be. But in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, how many one card combos, how many one card full fields have we seen? A lot of them. And it's still kind of there, you know? So, Prey to Plant Scorpio, for example. I go normal summon Prey to Plant Scorpio and summon Darling Cobra, and I search Instant Fusion, and I link those two into a Chair Beanie of the Burning Abyss. I send Carbonan into the Graveyard, summon a Vanilla Dragon, activate Instant Fusion, summon Darkfire Dragon. Hey look, LP, Pisty, LP leads to Darkness Metal, which summons a monster, which leads to Romulus, which searches Ravine. Ravine sends Brotor, you make, use your Pisty, summon your Red MD, and summon your Brotor. You just, woo, one card, man, one card. Does all of that, and that's the biggest problem of today. Just if you allow your opponent to play, and if your if your board isn't just as strong as it needs to be, you know, I'm not even just talking about combo. I'm talking about control as well. If you don't have things like there can only be one and summon limit and judgments to protect those floodgates, you're probably gonna get blown out by your opponent. Like the normal is really just two interruptions, and that's so subpar. If someone plays Magician and has two interruptions against me, I'm OTKing them in five minutes tops. Uh, quick OTK. Uh, this, that's not enough. Like, two cards is nothing. Literally, uh, summon Cerebus negate. Summon Astro negate. Okay, I have four cards left to OTK you with. That's okay. not enough. Okay. Even uh, True Draco can destroy two cards. Dinos can OTK you through two cards. It's not enough. Two is not, even three is not enough. Okay. I've been OTK before by bringing up three interruptions. So I just went to the lab and thought about a build that will not lose, period. Be why? Because all it takes is one card. All you need to do is resolve one card or one and a half cards. That's all you need. If all it takes is to resolve one to one and a half cards to win the game, then of course, the consequences and the dangers of letting your opponent play the game are too high. 
This is why I say it. When he's playing, you were losing. And that... That's just a problem. It's a problem we have. You know, cards just do so much now by themselves. The synergy level of Yu-Gi-Oh! as a card game versus other card games, the synergy is just so high. You can do so much. Things lead to more things, which lead to other things, which leads to things that you probably didn't even think it led to. And that's just something we got to deal with. So, um, just... So, I don't know how we fix this problem, but just, um, that, I guess this is a positive for a casual side of play, because when it comes to casual play, that's something you don't have to worry about. You don't have to worry about getting OTK'd or getting locked out if you don't make the strongest setup you can make, you know? So, like I said, even when it comes to control decks, um, if all I see is a Solemn and a Floodgate, even if my opponent went first... I kind of just won that game because, you know, no monster can stop a Solemn and when the flood get resolves, if I resolve that goes in match or that there can only be one with a full field, I just cleared that board and my opponent's not able to commit any more cards to the board because flood gets that oppressive now, I won. I, I don't need to do anything else. My opponent will probably just scoop um, because at this point to only continue playing is just wasting time. So. You know, things like that. Now, let's say, just, let's say the worst doesn't happen. You know, actually, you know, let's, let's say a, the best case scenario. Let's, let's look at, um, a deck that I'm still currently playing. Let's say I'm playing, uh, Lunalite Combo, right? Let's say I'm playing Lunalite. And my opponent is playing an Altergeist player. So, what happens if my opponent doesn't have a Floodgate, but he has four back row? Let's say he has a Compulse Evac device, a... Uh, Ultra Geist Protocol. Um, let's say he also has a Lost Wind, and uh, let's say he has a Pokemon, because I don't know what other back row I can think of. Well, what happens? Well, if I if I sit here, let's let's go ahead and pull out five cards. Okay, so and look at that. I have Foolish Goods, and I have Tinky, and I have a bunch of Dangers. You know, so this hand can play through all of that. Now, I'm not going to OTK, and my turn is going to get ended if I f go into all of that, but hey, what happens, um, though? Interesting thing happens. So, yeah, I played, my turn got ended, but my opponent flipped over all of his back row. I have a Lunalite Tiger in scale still, I have a Yellow Martin in Grave still, and I probably still have a few more cards in hand because I got to draw cards with these dangers. So, he won the battle, but I won the war. That's how that worked. Um, because, you know, your, your trap resources are a very finite resource. Monster resources are very re uh, recyclable. You see what happens, you know, when Yellow Martin is able to stay in the grave for an extra turn, Tigers and Scales, I can just start playing just off of Field and Grave, and I don't even need my hand anymore. And at this point, I'm outpacing you, I am out-resourcing you, and you're losing the game from there. So, yeah, you ended my turn, but I have more resources still, you know, because my grave is a resource, my field's a resource, and I probably sell cards in hand. And all those traps that you use, they're not coming back outside of the Lost Wind, obviously. But if I decide I'm going to make Tornado Dragon and I out two more cards... Um, what are you doing? You know, you're not, it, 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 it's over, the game's over. So, you know, that's why cards like Summon Limit and There Can Only Be One are necessary, even though I do not like them. I understand why they're being played because any other option is subpar. The other options don't get the job done because decks like Lunar Light, decks like Spiral, decks like Dragon Link can push through that stuff. You know, period, point blank. I hope you guys understand the underlying message that I'm trying to make. Whether it is combo or control, the consequences of allowing your opponent to play the game are too big. They're too huge, and you will almost always lose the game because if you set up, I guess, any less than five interruptions, your opponent will exploit that opening 
bust it wide open, probably break your board, and yeah, you probably won't get no decayed, but your opponent will probably set something up to seal the deal. Like, maybe they'll set an Abyss Dweller up main phase two, or if you're playing against a control deck, maybe they'll set up a Tornado Dragon or something to pop back row to where you're not coming back. Case in point, 2018, played World Chalice for the entire year, essentially, and I break in, I've broken a ton of boards, a ton of Pendulum boards, a ton of Goki boards, all that going second. And sometimes I fail to OTK my opponent, but I would slap a Christia down before I battle phase ran everything over or slap a Gamma Seal down. And that sealed the deal to where I don't have to worry about any of my opponent's follow-up plays because it's not happening. That kind of thing, you know? So even if the worst doesn't happen and you don't get OTK'd, just your opponent is probably going to summon something that to rob you of your follow-up play, um, whether you're playing combo or control. Again, um, and this is all apparent because, again, if you don't set up more than five interruptions if you're playing a combo deck or if you don't have the split gates up, your opponent is probably going to blow you out, assuming they did not brick. Again, we're talking about competitive play here, guys. Just, again, so much can be done off of one card, two cards, to where all I need to do is resolve a one card combo or two card combination to win the game. This is why we can't afford to allow our opponent to play because if that happens, if they are able to just, let's say they have just every single bombshell spell in their hand and they have one monster they need to resolve, all the negates are out the way, summon Predator Plant Scorpion. You see what happens when Ib was still in the game, just normal summon Draco Net, summon Ib, Guard Dragon combo, OTK, you know, good game. Or just to control that, activate Mystic Mind after baiting out all the other the gates. Hey, look, game's over. So, again, so should you allow your opponent to play the game? My answer has always been since Modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Since Master of 4, I don't think you can afford to allow your opponent to play because your opponent's playing you're losing. That's where my quote came from. So, guys, I hope that answers some of your questions. I want you guys' thoughts and feedback in the comments. I would actually like to have a conversation uh, with a lot of you regarding this topic and all that. Again, we're just talking about competitive play. Um, again, positive side of casual play. You don't have to worry about all that. You don't have to worry about the one card blowouts. Um, you don't have to worry about the one card build a board OTKs. You don't have to worry about the floodgates. I mean, May still have to worry about floodgates, but it's a lot easier. You're probably made the back removal. You don't have, you're not worried about consistency or breaking all that much. So I there there's there's a positive to everything. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This is Jay Money, and I am signing out.